Shalom, shalom. Welcome back. Let's get back into the word. Happy Sabbath. St. Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 36. St. Matthew chapter 14. You got your Bibles already. All right, let's begin. Verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus. All right, so who is Herod? Let's always put it in context. Herod is over the Jews. Who are the Jews? The Jews are the tribe of Judah or the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. So when you say Jews, you're not talking about all the tribe of Israel. Some people think when you say Jews, you're talking about all of Israel. That's because over in the land of the uh, land called the nation of Israel, people say Jews or Jewish, and they think you're talking about all of Israel because of them. But the people over in that land, the land of the nation of Israel, they are not the biblical Hebrews. The biblical Hebrews, Israelites, are scattered to the four winds. They are not in that land they call the nation of Israel. Those are imposters. They are, they call themselves Jewish. They call themselves Jews. The scripture calls them the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> they took over the land uh, by fraud in 1948. The biblical he Hebrews, Israelites, are scattered to the four winds. So at the time in the scriptures, at that time, Herod the Tetra, Tetra, Herod was over Jerusalem. And so he had heard about the fame of Jesus. Jesus was going about healing and uh, preaching the word. And people was getting healed and delivered. And devils was being cast out. People was being raised from the dead. Their eyes was being opened. The poor was receiving the gospel. Who are the poor? Who are the people Jesus was ministering to? Jesus was ministering to Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah, the original Hebrew people. Okay, that's who we are. We are the original Hebrew people. We've been scattered to the four winds. That's how we ended up in this country, came over on the Atlantic slave trade. The Lord said he would destroy us, which he did. He said he would scatter us, which he did. He said, I'm going to send you to Egypt again in ships. That's where we are. We're in, we're in Egypt again. <laughs> I know it may be called America, but to the Lord's eyes, it's still Egypt because it's bondage. We are in the land of our captivity today. So Herod, he had heard about the fame of Jesus. Verse 2, and said unto his servant, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. So Herod, he had heard, he knew who John the Baptist was. <laughs> Because he killed John the Baptist. <laughs> That's why he said, this is John the Baptist risen from the dead. He said, therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. <laughs> so he killed John the Baptist. So now he thinks Jesus is John the Baptist <laughs> risen from the dead. Verse 3, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother's Philip's wife. So uh, John the Baptist was preaching, and he, he was preaching, telling Herod what he was doing was a sin, as being over Jerusalem. <laughs> Herod had married or taken his brother's wife to be his wife. <laughs> and, and he told him, you shouldn't do that. That's wrong. That's a sin. And because he said that, Herod put John the Baptist in prison. So get ready for some persecution for preaching the gospel, especially being a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. The scriptures will be fulfilled. It's already been fulfilled. It has already been fulfilled. It's a lot more prophecy has to be fulfilled. Everything has to happen according to scripture. The scripture said you're going to suffer persecution 
You're going to go through some hard times. You're going to, some of us going to be killed for the, for the gospel. Lay down our life. John went through everything. He didn't mind. He was willing, ready, and able because he, he, he wanted to serve the Lord, preach the gospel. That's what he did. That's what he was called to do. Even if it meant going to prison, even if it meant giving up his life. And that's what we have to do too as servants of the Lord, as fo uh, followers, as disciples, as Hebrew Israelites, as the people of God, as the children of Ab Abraham, uh, the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. This is what we're called to do. We're called to lay down our life for the word of God. And we can't be afraid. So that's what John did. He, he preached the gospel and he was thrown in prison for telling the truth of the gospel. Verse four, for John said unto him, it is not lawful for thee to have her. <laughs> so that's what John was doing. He was just preaching the truth. People don't like to hear the truth, but the truth is the truth. The truth is not judgment. The truth is not condemnation. The truth is just the truth. It's the law. The, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. That's the law. He, John, John would tell him, look, you're not supposed to be having your brother and sister as your wife. <laughs> so he was preaching the truth. And the truth is coming out. The truth is coming out about everything, everybody, and everyone. You can't hide from the truth. <laughs> no matter how much you try to suffocate it, it's coming out. They think the people over in the land called the land of Israel, the nation of Israel, the world think that's Israel. They're the ruling class. They're part of the ruling class. The ruling class of people in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was doing his earthly ministry, are still the same ruling class. It's wrong. And they haven't changed. <laughs> and they changed the color of Israel <laughs> to make you think that's what color Israel is. Israel is not that color of the people that's in Israel today. You're looking at a Hebrew Israelite. This is the color of Hebrew Israelite. We're black folks. We came over in the Atlantic slave trade. But the whole wide world would tell you that Israel is white. That's a lie. <laughs> People don't want to hear the truth, but the truth is coming out, okay? So get ready for it because it's going to come out sooner or later, and you can't stop it. <laughs> Verse 5, and when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. So after uh, Herod had put John in prison, he wanted to put him to death, but he didn't do it because the multitude, they held that John was a prophet. So you can't be killing the prophets of God. <laughs> so he feared. So that's why he didn't kill him at the first time when he put him in prison. Verse 6, but when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So a lot of people ain't gonna like this, especially all y'all folks out there celebrating your birthday. That's a um, thing that's, it's a pagan thing. It's, it's paganism, paganism. <laughs> the Lord ain't called us to keep birthdays and all these so-called holidays. <laughs> all of them is pagan. It's, it's, it's nothing to do with serving the Lord. <laughs> and so, that's why Herod was keeping it because it's a pagan ritual, a birthday. Jesus didn't celebrate birthday. The, the people of God didn't celebrate their birthday. Hebrew Israelites didn't celebrate their birthdays. He picked this up from other cultures and stuff. It was his birthday. It's his, but when Herod was, his birthday was kept, <laughs> it was a, a, a pagan ritual. The daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So the lady that he was having sex with, Herodias, he had taken her to be with his wife, his, his brother's wife. He took her to be his wife. And his wife had a daughter, and she danced before Herod. <laughs> and that pleased Herod. He like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Verse 7. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Because of the fact that she danced uh, very erotic 
in front of him, turned him on, got him all excited. He said, I'll give you whatever you ask <laughs> because of this pagan ritual, this pagan holiday that everybody want to keep called the birthday. Verse 8, and she, be, and she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John the Baptist's head and a charger. So this is at a birthday party. <laughs> and her mother had told her, look, whatever he asks you, tell him to give you the head of John the Baptist. <laughs> so her mother instructed her to do this. So John the Baptist is going to be killed because of Herod's birthday. He's going to be beheaded. Verse 9. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oak's sake and them that which sat with him at meat, he commanded to be given her. So just like that, John the Baptist hadn't did anything wrong. He hadn't broken any laws. <laughs> he hadn't harmed anybody. He just preached the word of God and told the truth. So when you tell the truth, you're going to be persecuted. <laughs> you might be thrown into prison and you might be killed. So just be forewarned. So John the Baptist was killed on Herod's birthday because Herod got excited when a girl danced and she said, I want the head of John the Baptist. So verse 9 again, he was sorry, nevertheless, for the oak's sake and them that sat with him at meat. He commanded it to be given her. So he, verse, verse 10, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. John was just preaching the gospel. He was in prison. And now he's getting ready to be beheaded. His head is going to be chopped off. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, not Christian, Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. He didn't come to call Christian. He come to call disciples, which who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Israel. All the tribes of Israel, specifically the tribe of Judah. Okay? You're going to suffer persecution. <laughs> Believe me, it's going to happen. Now that we're telling everybody that we're the original Hebrews, the original Israelites of the biblical of the Bible, people don't like that. The truth is coming out. So John was beheaded in prison, verse 11, and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. These people were wicked, they were evil, they were Hebrew Israelites. But they didn't believe in the gospel. So they're going to have to give an account on the day of judgment for this wicked sin that they did. For killing the prophets of God. So that's what I'm telling you. Some of Hebrew Israelites, even though they're Israel, they're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because they're evil. They're wicked. They're of the devil. <laughs> because they do not believe that Jesus is the son of God. They do not believe the preaching of the gospel. And right now, Hebrew Israelites that are scattered, don't even believe that they're Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> but they want to believe they're Christian. You try to tell them you're a Hebrew Israelite, they look at you like you're crazy. So they think Jesus is coming back for everybody in the whole wide world. Jesus is only coming back for Israel. That's who he's coming back for, his people. Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite. So he's coming back for Israel. That's, that's what the scripture teaches. Go back and research the scripture. Search it again and again and again. Research it. <laughs> Amen. So verse 12, and his disciples came and took up the body and buried it. And went and told Jesus. So his John's disciples took his body and they buried it and they told Jesus what had happened. Herod, he had a birthday party. The, the, uh, his wife's daughter danced. It pleased him, excited him. And 
she he told her whatever she wanted he'll give it to her she said i want the head of john the baptist he, he had promised on an oath so he had to do it so after she finished dancing he commanded john to be beheaded <laughs> and so they they chopped his head off and we went to bury the body and we just wanted to come and tell you jesus what had happened verse 13 when jesus heard of it he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart and when the people had heard thereof they followed him on foot out of the cities so jesus had to go and and, and get alone with the father for a while because of what had happened he had to just go and pray and, and, and commune with the Lord because he knew what happened to John and he knew it was going to be happening to him. He knew he was, he was going to have to be crucified. So he had to go and talk to the Father to be strengthened. But the people, when they heard thereof that he had left, they followed him on foot out of the city. So wherever Jesus was going, he always had great multitudes following him. Verse 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. So the great multitude are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. All the rest of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom are scattered at this time. Some of them are still in Jerusalem, but most of them are scattered abroad. The ones that are not scattered is the southern kingdom of, of Judah and Benjamin, who are called Jews. They're the multitude here referred in the scriptures. These are the Jews. These are the tribe of Judah. And so Jesus, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. Same way it is today, Jesus is coming back for Israel. He's here. He's even now his spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can heal you right now. Just believe the word of God is able to heal you through the spirit of God. Verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. <laughs> so the disciples, they say, Lord, it's getting late. It's in the evening. It's, this is a desert place. The, the time has already passed. The sun is going down. It's getting dark. Send the multitudes away, that they may go to the village so they can buy some food. <laughs> so the disciples, they try to help Jesus. At least they think they are. And they tell him, look, we ain't got no food to feed them. They need to go so they can get some food to eat. <laughs> Verse 16. But Jesus said to them, they need not depart. Give ye them, give ye them to eat. <laughs> so Jesus, whatever they say, Jesus say the opposite. No, no, they don't need to go nowhere. We can feed them. <laughs> give them something to eat. Verse 17, and they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. Lord, we, we don't have enough to feed this multitude. We got five loaves of bread and two fishes. That's all we have. Verse 18, he said, bring them hither to me. Jesus said, okay, that's enough. Just bring it to me. <laughs> Oh, man. Verse 19, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. So Jesus commanded all the multitude to be sitting down on the grass and he took the loaves and the two fishes. And he's looking up to heaven, he blessed it. And he broke it and gave it the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. <laughs> so he made them all sit down in the grass. He's like, make them all sit down. <laughs> okay, 
bring me the two fishes, the two the two fishes and the five loaves. He looked he looked up to heaven and said, Lord, bless this food. <laughs> then he break the loaves and he gave it to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Verse 20, and they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. So all the people, all the multitude that was there, got fed. They only had five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus fed him. He didn't make up no collection. He's like, well, we may have to take up a collection. No, he didn't have to take up no collection. He didn't have to take up any offering. But people might say, well, the, the, the fish and the, and the bread was the offering. Yeah, but it wasn't no money. And he's like, pass have the collection plate around. We need to take up some money, some offerings, some tithes. <laughs> no, it wasn't nothing like that. They used what they had. They had some fishes and they had some bread. <laughs> And they didn't charge the people a plate, $5 a plate, $2 a plate, $10 a plate. No, it was free. <laughs> you 501c3 corporation, Sunday churches, pastors, preachers, and teachers, y'all can learn a lot from Jesus. <laughs> Verse 21, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. So Jesus fed 5,000 people, over 5,000 people, with two fishes and five loaves of bread for free. Then charged them not one penny. <laughs> Verse 22, and straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So Jesus said, look, y'all go ahead and get in the ship, go on over to the other side, and I'll take care of the multitude. <laughs> because sometimes they get in the way of Jesus. <laughs> They're like, y'all just go ahead and go. I, I, I got this. Verse 23, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So after Jesus sent the multitude away, he went into this mountain to pray to the Father. And after the evening come, was come, he was alone. So that's a lot of work. Ministry. It takes a lot out of you. That's why you got to pray to get regenerated, re-energized with the Spirit of God to get strength. To go back and continue to doing what you're doing. You can't just say, oh, I'm tired. I can't do it no more. Go pray. <laughs> the Lord will give you strength. Don't stop. Don't give up. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. So the disciples was on this boat, on this ship, and they were in the midst of the sea. The wind was blowing, so the ship was tossed by the waves. <laughs> Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, went unto them walking on the sea. <laughs> so Jesus said, Well, I gotta get to gotta get to uh the disciples. I know they probably weary about me and what's going on and about the wind and the waves. But Father, I thank you for making a way for me to get to the to the disciples, my disciples. So Jesus said, Well, here we go, Lord. Thank you for making a way out of no way. So he walked on the sea. He's like, okay, here we go. He walked in on the water to get to the boat. There ain't no bridge, so he got to get there. <laughs> so the Lord, he, the Lord blessed, the Father blessed Jesus to walk on the sea. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing, nothing at all. Verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. <laughs> they saw him, oh, man, it's a ghost. <laughs> oh, Lord, what are we going to do? <laughs> they were afraid. They cried out for fear. Verse 27, but straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. <laughs> so 
So Jesus always said, don't be afraid. It's I. Be of good cheer. It's me. <laughs> don't be weary. Why are you being afraid? I'm not a ghost. Verse 28. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. <laughs> oh, Peter. Peter just, he had to, he had to be tested. He, he wanted to show the Lord, look, Lord, I believe it's you. <laughs> so if it's you, let me come out there on the water. <laughs> but what was Jesus supposed to say? Verse 29, he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked out of the water to go to Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus said, all right, yeah, Peter, it's me. <laughs> Come on out here. <laughs> Peter got down out of the ship and he walked on the water. And Peter was like, whoa, wow, this is cool. I like this. <laughs> Verse 30. But when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. <laughs> so at first he was all right. But the winds was blowing in the waves, and he, he fear fear took over. Fear took over him, and he began to sink. He wasn't in faith anymore. His faith was gone. <laughs> hey, Lord, help me, save me, Jesus. <laughs> so he cried out, "Lord, save me!" Verse thirty-one. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. And caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? <laughs> so Jesus caught him by the hand and said, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? He said, You got a little faith. Use the little faith that you have. Don't doubt. Just use your faith. You walk in with me on the water. Believe. Why did you doubt? When you doubt, that's when your faith goes away. That's when you paralyze your faith. Verse 32. And when they come into the ship, the wind ceased. So as they stepped into the ship, all the wind stopped blowing and the waves calmed down. Verse 33. Then they were, then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, Of a truth. Thou art the Son of God. So the disciples, after seeing this miracle, they worship the Lord, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Now remember, the disciples are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. So what does that mean, a seed of Abraham? God made a covenant with Abraham. What was the covenant? He told them that through your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All this land that you see, I'm giving it to you and your descendants after you. And I'm promising you a seed. At that time, Abraham didn't have any children. And his wife was very old. And then they had a handmaid named Sarah, uh, Hagar, who was an Egyptian. They got her from Pharaoh down in Egypt. <laughs> And Sarah said, well, I'm too old, so maybe you ought to have a baby with my, my handmaid. So Abraham had a baby with Hagar, whose name was Ishmael, Ishmael. And Ishmael is still in the world today. All the people of Ishmael, you don't hear people talk about it, but Ishmael still exists. And all the people of Ishmael, they know who they are. The enemies of God, the enemies of Israel. And then Sarah got pregnant at an old age and had a baby by abraham who's who was who the, the son was called isaac isaac is the promised seed that's the seed of abraham isaac and isaac had two sons jacob and esau by Re rebecca and rebecca was having hard labor and she said why is it so lord why why am i having this hard labor what's going on so the Lord said, two manner of people are in your womb. Two manner of people, two different nations. <laughs> They're not the same people. <laughs> and one will be stronger than the other, and one, the older one, will serve the younger. So when they came out, they made a distinction on how the children was born. First came out Esau, who's also renamed Edom. 
And Esau, Edom is still in the world today. They know who they are. Esau, 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 Edom, they're still in the world today. They know who they are. The world act like they don't know who they are. They don't talk about Esau, but they are in the world. They're enemies of Israel. So Esau came out first. The Bible said God hate Esau, but love Jacob. I'm telling what the scripture says. The scripture said Esau came out red all over. They made a distinction to tell you exactly what Esau looked like, <laughs> as opposed to what Jacob came out. Jacob came out second, hanging on to Esau's heel. But they told you what Esau looked like on purpose because Jacob came out looking just like his father and mother, brown, normal. There was no difference about how he looked, but there was a difference in how Esau looked. They said he was red and hairy, but Jacob was normal. So they didn't make no characterization about how he looked because he looked just like his father and his mother. I'm not saying that Esau... It, 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 Jacob is uh, Isaac and his mother is not the father of Esau, but he looked different. He was red all over and hairy according to the scripture. So Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And he had 12 sons and all his sons became the nation of Israel, the 12 member nation, who we are. The people that's in the land today that call themselves Israel, are not the biblical Hebrews, are not the biblical Israel. Your 501c3 Sunday pastors, teachers, they're not going to tell you this. <laughs> they're not the original biblical Hebrew Israelites of the Bible that's in the land of Israel, of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel, the, the people, the, the Hebrew Israelites, the seed of Abraham are scattered to the four winds. We're everywhere. That's why the nation, all the earth is blessed because we're everywhere. We mixed in with the Gentiles. So the Lord is coming back for Israel who's scattered everywhere. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. But we don't know who we are. A lot of us, we're ignorant, but the Lord is waking us up. So this is important. That's why you need to go back and research and restudy the scriptures. We were brought here on the Atlantic slave trade. All of our heritage, knowledge, understanding, culture, language, our name, everything was changed, ticket taken away from us. Our identity, especially our identity. <laughs> they can't find out that they Israel too late. The truth is coming out. We are Israel. We know who we are. <laughs> the Lord was going to tell us anyway. <laughs> You can't hide the truth, no matter how much you try. So the Lord is coming back for Israel. A lot of people don't want to accept it, don't want to believe it, but the truth is coming out. So these are the disciples that Jesus was uh, talking about. These are the people that was worshiping Jesus and saying, of a truth, you are the son of God. Verse 34, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genazareth. Verse 35, and when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. So they had heard that Jesus was there, and so they brought all the people with diseases. Here, Lord, here's all these folk, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. They sick. Jesus come to heal the sick. According to scripture, according to prophecy, he came to fulfill the prophecies. All the prophecies will be fulfilled, all of them. Many of them have already been fulfilled, but there are a lot more prophecies that has to be fulfilled, and it's going to happen. That's what you really need to understand. Everything in this world have an expiration date. This world is coming to an end. Things are going to get progressively worse. They, it has to be to fulfill the prophecy. It's going to get progressively worse for Israel, the seed of Abraham. 
the tribe of Judah, for us, we're going to be persecuted, especially when the mark of the beast come on the scene. If you don't accept that mark, they're going to kill you. Yeah, it's coming. The mark of the beast. Get ready. Verse 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. So everybody that touched Jesus, if they only just touched his garment, was made perfectly whole. Thank you for listening. Shalom. See you next time.